Hey Space fans, it's Tarek Malik, Editor-in-Chief of Space.com, and in 1965, on July 14th, we got our first close-up view of Mars with Mariner 4, and we got Rob Manning, JPL's Chief Engineer Emeritus Extraordinaire, to walk us through exactly what that first TV image was like. Check it out. So, I, this is one that's that's really gotten to me for years. I'm sorry, I have many passions about this mission, just because I've written about it a lot, I guess. But when I was a kid, my father used to give music lessons. One of his students was a, a kid named Alan Layton, and his father was Robert Layton. Yeah, Robert. He was on the, the Mariner 4 imaging team. He was an astronomer at Caltech. And uh, so I got to hang out with him when I was a kid. Of course, you know, at the but time. Wait, you, you know, you're you're going to tell that story, right? On live? Online? Alive? Which one? Uh, oh, are you, you going to tell the same story? Are, are we, are we, which one? Oh, the one you're telling right now. Oh, well, no, it, it's what got me about the, this was, you know, he said originally, you know, we weren't going to send a TV camera on Mariner 4. And I said, what? Yeah. So it was going to go out as, as Mariner 2 did to Venus. It was one of those, you know, what your people call squiggly line missions where you get back this this cool data, but, <laughs> but not pictures. <laughs> and Leighton, being an optical astronomer, yeah. said, well, you know, this is an incredible opportunity to do more than any 10 big Earth telescopes could do. And in his opinion we owed it to the taxpayer so kind of i as i recall late in the game they started working very rapidly to add a tv camera and at this point uh, a studio tv camera over at you know tv city and in, in downtown los angeles where cbs was or something these cameras were about the size of a small dishwasher or a very large microwave they were big yeah. they had lens turrets and all that kind of stuff yeah and Viticon tubes were kind of delicate glass vacuum tubes with a, a with a, a photosensitive pickup on the back, and I think they were in clusters for for burgeoning color at that point. No, just one. Oh, it was just one. <laughs> yeah, these are the first ones. Yeah, it's amazing. So, I think but they, one. but they yeah. had to figure out a way to, uh, I I think oversee the manufacturing and testing of something in fairly short order for this mission. Correct. Yeah. No. This is a. Uh... It is so funny because it, 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 the arguments went so much that people didn't want a camera, really. It was just that uh, uh, the squiggly, it's so much easier to build a mission with squiggly lines um, because it's, <laughs> because it's, 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 it's the, do, the total data rate is so much less. Um, and you can get it, you can, you can t take turns measuring different sample, sampling different analog channels, like, like plasma wave and other things and, and actually get it down and get it in real time. You didn't need any things like the trouble with telescope with a camera, uh, even, even with a fairly slow exposure on a, on a Viticon tube and the Viticon tubes are only about this big, right? They're really small. They have a screen. It's a screen. People don't realize it's actually a television tube, just like, really, <laughs> just like the TVs that we had as kids little mm -hmm. tv tube that kind of worked backwards uh, you know, whereas a tv the electron beam would go through and then basically write uh scan back and forth and was brighter uh where where it was stronger beam where the where the pixel needed right so there's phosphorus painted little dots painted on the screen in fact there are three colors of dots and if you carefully aim it you can pick which color you would that the beam is aiming for and you can do that scan 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 and that's that's how, and they do it fast enough their eyes don't notice it and it looks like a real moving picture and uh, now what, what what's cool about a viticon tube is it's basically the same thing in reverse basically you, you, you project an image on the end of your video tube and then you have another uh, exactly like the same the electron beam scanning it but this time the electron beam is sensitive to the brightness of the light that's on the screen and the amount of current on that beam drops if there's not much light if there's a lot of light it gets stronger and if you just measure that and send it down, you get a squiggly line, just like just like other squiggly lines where you measure things. But then you have to do it for that line, then that line, then that line, and you have to go all the way down. Oh, and by the way, only one color, one right. color. And the other, to get the other colors, you have to take do this all over again with a different color lens, color we put it between the lens and the and the light. So basically, we we'll find the lens, I think. And so it's basically blocks um all the other colors except for red and so red goes on there then you take so you have to take three colors three different pictures to get a single right. so but but mariner was just black and white right black and white so they only had one so they didn't have a color wheel right. we call it a color wheel but that's how they got colored later on like on voyager but 
uh, the, the, the trip was that that that's a lot of data compared to just I'm listening to the plasma wave <laughs> up and down it goes. So this is like so it's just a huge amount of stuff. And what do you and you can't get it down to earth that fast. So you have to put it someplace. So you need a tape recorder to sh shove this stuff in. And they need a mechanism to play the tape recorder, usually backwards and reverse. From we, you don't actually go back and rewind and play it again. Mm -hmm. You go back, and you play the whole thing backwards. <laughs> it comes out the other way, and then it goes under a tape recorder on Earth. It's a huge amount of data, I and mean, the huge amount, and it over overshadows the squiggly line data that the other scientists wanted. So the other scientists are worried that they're going to lose their data if you put a TV camera. Put one of these little uh -huh. Viticon tubes in there. They're not going to be able to get their data because they're because the TV is such a hog, and it's a hog in other respects, not just data. It's also a hog in money because you have to have this complexity of this extra tape recorder. You need a you need complexity of of, um, of getting the data down, and it's and it's so it's going to threaten the the viability of the mission itself. So they're like, ah, oh, oh, man, tape recorders, television. Now, oh, and by the way, they're going to take all my mass. Because they're going to grow in mass. It's going to go from a, it's going to be something small, and it's going to grow from a microwave oven to a refrigerator, just like you said. I mean, because they really hadn't really mastered the art of making these things reliable because they're so dinky. They're really small, and you have to get it focused nicely. So, and that was the, so there was a lot of risk, and there was a lot of development. So there were people at JPL who became really good at designing, or at least monitoring the companies who are good at designing the, these vacuum tubes designed specially for these applications. Very, everything was very bespoke, all designed by hand. Because in those days, we didn't have computers to help us design stuff. But you so, have slide yeah. rules. Spe speaking slide of rules. by hand, there was that first TV image from Mariner Four. Oh of, yeah, of Mars. You know, yeah. I think, I think, I think, dear listeners, you heard uh, Rod and. and and Rob talking about how this camera was black and white, but there is a color image uh, that um, I actually met uh, when I was here as a little college, you know, cub uh, reporter when I was visiting JPL's uh, press, uh, um, you know, Building. press corps. They were walking me through like how they did everything, how they shared images with the public, and they took me into the back room where the um, the image specialist and I, I can't remember his name. Rod, you'd probably know him. Um, but he, he I, yeah, I Yuri, yeah, Yuri. He, oh, Yuri, he, oh, yeah, Yuri Van der Wert. Yeah, Van der Wert. He said, he's like, this is the room. This is where we got the big thing, and we hand colored the picture of Mars. Just that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And it's, it's, it's. We've got it, John. We've got it on line, uh, line forty six there if, uh, for folks that are that are watching there. But that's uh, that's that's on display at JPL. Yes, you can still is. see it there. It is. Uh, <laughs> it's, well, and, it was it, it was in color only because they they pick color a uh, range of a spectrum of pastel colors, right? Yeah, they, so, they colored it, it was such black a cool and a cool story. I mean, <laughs> so just again for context, this this there's a paper printout of this first digital image. It's two hundred pixel, right? Digital image. Well, of, of uh, Mars. Uh, well, do you remember those old like line printers that go tunk 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 and they had to do scissors and they had to because right. their spaces were so big they had to just cut them out and each one had a had a octal number uh, that would represent the brightness of that pixel and they had to line it up and they lined it up vertically do, 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 across and they took their took their uh, colored pens or colored pe pastels and colored each pixel with based on the number so so, so it's like paint by numbers. Exactly the same thing. <laughs> and, I, exactly and I don't know if this is uh, apocryphal or not, but I did read one account that said that uh, a couple of because you know this is this is uh, NASA and JPL in their in their ad hoc days, right? So a couple of guys said, "Oh, oh, I got an idea," and drove down to Pasadena Art Supply, which was open for many yeah. decades, yeah. since closed, and said, "We need some some grease pencils, some pastels." I said, "Okay," and they said, "We got orange and yellow, or green and brown," and they were yeah. like. Uh, 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 according to them, there was a toss-up moment in their thinking. It would have been a really different experience if it had been green and brown. I don't know why they'd pick green and brown, but or maybe it was they only had green and brown, and then had to go back to find the orange and yellow or something. There was some hang-up there. But you know, to I, when I first went into the comms building and saw that thing setting, hanging there, realized what it was. It was like this holy relic moment for me, yeah, because yeah. it was such a cool thing that they did. And then the actual image finally gets uh, printed out and dried and hung up, 
and it was really close except that it was black and white and this was and, in color and, and a little stretched out this way yeah it did mm. they, they had you cut them a little bit closer together but, but you're absolutely right you may ask the question well why did they do that and the and then because the so remember now these images you have to they come down two ways they come in they, they were coming into the tape recorder first brunk, and then they over the next hours it's like six or seven hours a good chunk of a day right rod you know the numbers i forget yeah. um and it comes and they, they they play it back then it takes a fair amount of time to process that stuff process that because we didn't have a bunch of computers back then uh, to help us and so but the data was there and they just the imaging team just printed it out on their teletype you know the, the, the line printer ka-tunk, ka-tunk, ka-tunk. and and uh so they said you know we don't have to wait we can just do it now <laughs> what and then, <laughs> you just need a bunch of this uh, a gradation of color of a single color it doesn't have to it can be blue green whatever they pick brown i guess orange but but it was and, but the funny thing is when they finished that and i'm sure yuri mentioned that right that they they said look what we did don't show anybody <laughs> 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 we don't know if that's right i mean part of it, they didn't know what they're looking at for example that bottom part of that image is it possible you pop it back up again the big white blob well the, no the, all the black stuff down below oh yeah that's that's black space so that's a that's the limb of Mars. Oh, and and so if you, to the middle, the lower part of the black part, the dark brown actually in this picture, but it's actually black. The lower left hand uh, quadrant, uh, you can sort of see lines in the in the uh, in the uh, in the black or the gra- or the brown in this case. Cows. and that's and that's the atmosphere. That's the that's the that's the you can sort of see. So what you're looking at is you turn upside down. You see, you're looking out over, over, over the curvature of Mars. And you're oh, seeing the yeah, yeah, yeah. The layer okay, so, okay. Yeah. So it's so, <laughs> wow. so, but they didn't know that. They didn't know what they were looking at. <laughs> they, well, and to be fair know. to the to the squiggly line scientist, just to cap off your 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 TV camera story, yeah, I, I think each image took eight hours to mm-hmm. send mm-hmm. down. And they had to do it twice. So I now that you contextualize it this way, I, I have to lighten up on my. They wanted to send it without a TV camera because it actually probably made a lot of sense to those well, guys. Well, it, it made sense because the co- the price is right too, right? Because yeah. it's, it's a, adding a television is a huge step up in complexity, right. uh, and so and it wasn't just the ground software. It was, you know, it, this whole you know, how do you get a tube that doesn't shatter itself during launch right. the vi- launch vibrations all, those, all the phosphors off the back yeah, yeah yeah i mean making things that can survive a launch vibration you know you don't put glass out there God, are you kidding me why did you put <laughs> why'd you well, put little yeah so you, you need had to be very had to be very good at holding it stiffening it up making sure it doesn't vibrate and all the issues associated with the contaminants and everything else that associated with with making a tube that that uh, doesn't leak i mean it's really hard to make a tube by the way um that's 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 why in the old days remember the old the old God, we're talking to old people like old people <laughs> we used to have stereo stereos with all these tubes in it but the yeah. typical lifetime of a stereo amplifier with all those um vacuum those glass tubes, tubes vacuum yeah. tubes were was about a year or two before you got you lost one of those tubes and you had to go find another one and they all burned out on you kind of like old like the old light bulbs except worse and and something Tarek has expensive. never seen is the tube testing console at the grocery store where you'd take your vacuum tube out of your yeah. stereo or your television set and you'd go look at a little book and you'd you'd fit it in the right plug and it would test it and then it would sell you another one uh but speaking i, I had of, a i had a being, stereo with tubes i, I take it my, my mom gave me her stereo and it had tubes. yeah, yeah. you nerd very, very okay nice. well uh, it had I a know nice hum got, that when it warmed up 